All right, today we're gonna build a PC. That's it. Okay, so a friend of mine at work, I actually built a PC for him about five years ago. And it's actually come to the point to where it's slowing down. So we basically need to repeat the process all over again. So my buddy's not really like a huge gamer or anything. So we're not going, you know, balls to the wall, crazy, you know, gamer PC build here. Um, I'm gonna go over the parts we used and uh, discuss kind of why we chose them. At the heart of every system is your processor. We went with the Ryzen 3400G, which we went with because, the reason we went with the G lineup is because it actually has built-in graphics, meaning that we don't need to add a video card, um, which would be probably you know, $200, $300. If later on you decide you wanna run more graphically intensive games, you can always add a graphics card later. For the motherboard, we went with an ASRock B450M, so the B450 chipset, because while it is considered a budget kind of chipset level, it's gonna give you almost every um, feature you're gonna need in a budget build. Um, you, obviously, you could go for the higher chipset line, go for the X series, but in our case, we don't need that. This has everything we need built in. We just found out the other day with um, the new Ryzen 5000 series that the B450 chipset will support those new Ryzen 5000 series chips. So if you do want to upgrade to a 5000 series chip, we can do that. RAM. Now I know uh, Ryzen chips are very RAM dependent. So we could have gone with something crazy, crazy fast, crazy high frequency, but we went with a 3200 kit. This is gonna be 16 gigabytes, two eight gigabyte sticks. Uh, 3200 megahertz is definitely fast enough for sure. Um, and we also have two more open slots on the motherboard in case we want to upgrade to another kit of this and get 32 gigs. So 16 should be more than enough for a family PC. The SSD we'll be using is a silicon power. I've had nothing but positive experiences with this brand. We will be using the 512 NVMe uh, M.2 version. It's just easier. Uh, NVMe is much faster than SATA and you don't have to deal with uh, any extra cables. Power supply. Now, if I had to recommend, I would say never go with anything under an 80 plus rating. So all these extremely cheap power supplies you see on eBay for $20, do not buy those. If you care anything about the components that you are hooking up to it, you're gonna at least want an 80 plus rating. Now this one is 80 plus bronze, which is a step up from 80 plus, I think 80 plus white, but this is certainly good enough for this system. We are also going with two of these, two out, two of, two of, two of these Seagate, uh, two terabyte Barracuda, uh, 7200 RPM drives. Two terabytes is gonna give you tons of space. And the reason we went with two of these is because we will be putting these in RAID uh, one. So they will be exact mirror copies of each other. So in the event that one of these fails, the other one will have a complete backup of that data and you can just swap the new one in there. Uh, what else? Uh, case, honestly, go with whatever case you like. They all do pretty much the same thing unless you're getting into high-end water cooling where you need ample space and stuff. So if you want a small form factor, go with that as long as your motherboard fits it. If you want something for 20 bucks off eBay, do that. We went with a master box, cooler master master box, Q300L. That should be fine. And the last thing is this TP-Link Wi-Fi card. So it's a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. This is gonna go right into your PCI Express slot. So, so those are the parts. Let's actually start building. Oh, that doesn't look good. This came out. That's probably not good. Uh, pro tip, use your case box as a trash box so that throwing away all your trash later is easy. 
You have to like the video for that tip. All right, so the motherboard. What you're gonna wanna do first is install your processor and RAM um, because it's the easiest thing to do when the motherboard is outside of the case. We can also install the M.2 drive, so that'll be useful. One thing that's awesome about AMD is that AMD includes a CPU heatsink and fan and these are actually decent unlike the ones Intel used to give you and they're free so that makes them even more decent. So you can see an AMD CPU has the pins on the processor so you have to be much more careful with the processor than you do the motherboard. Uh, Intel is the opposite the chips are not going to have pins on them, but the motherboard will. For this, you line up the triangle on the processor with the triangle on the motherboard. Kind of give it a wiggle test. It's good. And then you just drop this guy down and it is secured. Then we can easily install the uh, CPU cooler. Let us unscrew this. All right. Kind of just line it up. And the best bet is to screw them in diagonally. Now I don't really screw them in all the way at first. I kind of go halfsies just so I don't want any flexing. All right, now you don't have to over tighten these. You know, you're not competing in the world's strongest man competition. We now just plug this into the CPU header. So if you look on the motherboard, you will see one of the fan headers labeled, labeled CPU fan, which is this one guy down here. Um, next, we can just pop in the RAM. That's super easy. For installing RAM, I gotta remember the correct way. You, s I know for a fact you skip a slot when you're only filling half of them. Install that, line up the notch, and you can just press it until you hear a click. We will quickly consult the motherboard guide because that will tell you exactly which slots to install your RAM in. I was wrong. Go with the furthest away and then skip one. Boom. Um, one thing we can also install now is because we have an M.2 SSD, <clears throat> we can install that before putting the motherboard into the case. So you're gonna wanna neatly open the box really delicately. Yeah, really delicately. Uh, screw, the screw is, I think it comes with the motherboard. Take that box that you probably threw across the room or are installing your motherboard on or took it out already and is sitting directly in front of you the whole time and acquire the little tiny screw. They're actually super easy to install. Slide it in there at like a 45 degree angle. And once it doesn't give anymore, you just push it down and it will line up with the standoff. If it doesn't line up with the standoff, you can move it along the line. There are different screw holes. I feel like editor me is like, turn this to black and white as I'm playing some intense, like Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible music right now. All right, easy. Um, I think that's everything we can do before putting the motherboard in. So if you look this top corner, it will always determine whether you want to install your power supply first. If it looks like it's going to be a tight fit up here, I would recommend installing your power supply first and getting that uh, CPU power pin, that eight pin up and over and threaded through here before installing your motherboard because it could be a pain once you have the motherboard installed. So you're gonna wanna gently pull it out, gently pull it out. Gently pull it out. Power supply acquired. A lot of people have questions of which direction do you install it? This direction or this direction? The determining factor is if you have uh, ventilation on the bottom of your case, like we do here, you're gonna want to install it with the fan down because the fan is going to be passing air over the power supply. So if we have perforations, or airflow in the bottom, it can suck in cool air from the bottom of the case and cool the power supply. Sorry if you can't see this, it's nothing entertaining at all. all right. Now we get to do the fun part of doing our cable management. We have a 24 pin, which is common on every motherboard for now. And then we have an eight pin going to the CPU, but we also have two hard drives. So we're going to need two SATA connection ports. It's going to go through here and then our eight pin. So you're going to want to route it through there and up through eh, top 
left corner. We need two SATA, so we'll use those. Let's install the motherboard. So one thing before installing the motherboard, do not forget your IO shield. So this is gonna go from the inside of the case, push it out. Some are easier than others. Just kind of push it on every corner. Now there's four corners, so you'll need to push it at least 27 times because every time you push a corner, another one pops out. As you can hear, come on. Ah, we're in. All right, let's slide the motherboard in. You should be able to line up all your I.O. stuff. Okay, now just take your screws and you can install them where you put your risers. So, since we are extremely dumb and I just screwed the motherboard down on top of the plug, unscrew the motherboard, I do. It's like my dad used to always say, you're not building a computer unless you have to do something twice. Used to always say that, like every day, right when I woke up, it was weird. Uh, E-pin is in, next is 24 pin, which is the big one. Boom, that's in. Um, then you're gonna have a bunch of front panel headers. Let's see, this is HD audio. Uh, we have a USB 3.0, which is always the worst. We can plug it in. Okay, our second to last step is going to be installing the hard drives. Uh-oh. So it looks like you get one hard drive mounting thing and two solid state. So we might have to improvise here. I think this is gonna come down to a very sophisticated duct tape job. One has been successfully duct taped. It's like my dad always used to say, if you're not duct taping hard drives in your computer, what, what are you really doing? He used to tell me that every night before bed. Really weird. Now we can install the one in the correct location. All right, now we slide this guy in, push this down. This should just secure, and it does. Now we did get two SATA cables, which is convenient because that is how many drives we have. So there's one, here's two, go in. There we go, okay. Now the other sides just connect directly to your motherboard. You can kind of just pick any two. We are officially wired up. Just trust that I'm doing some excellent cable management back here and it looks beautiful. And I'm totally about to show you, but if the camera cuts out, then uh, we must have had a technical last step <laughs> is the Wi-Fi card. And we can slide it in. We are in. I think we're ready to boot it up. Let's Clear off the spot and we are going to attempt to boot it up. Okay, moment of truth. When we hit the power button, is our computer going to come on? We have liftoff. I hear it doing something. Oh, yes. So we're gonna enter the BIOS. Okay, we're in the BIOS. Our mouse is working. Okay, so total memory. You can see we have 16 gigs. Okay, let's go to boot. Okay, generic flash. Yep, that's what we want. If we have 10, we're gonna save exit. It's gonna reboot. It should attempt to boot directly from our drive. See spinning. I see the Windows setup screen. All right. Okay, so you're gonna to go to custom. So this is a good sign. It's detecting all of our drives. You just hover over that one, click it, and then go next. And it's going to start installing Windows and uh, it should go pretty quickly and I'll be back once we are in Windows. All right, so I've gone through and installed Windows and installed all the updates. The last thing we have to do is raid these two hard drives. Just search storage um, and you'll see this manage storage spaces come up and it'll detect the drives that are um, connected that are available to use in a pool. So we can create pool. Um, then it'll ask for its resiliency type. We're just gonna set this up in a two-way mirror. It looks good, create storage space. You can see we have our boot drive and then you can see that one storage space with two terabytes of data. So that's pretty much it. I think we've done everything we've needed to do. Um, if you enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like if you loved it. Uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you're notified the next time we post something awesome. See you on the next one.